What's up guys, Econ John here. Welcome to a new five part series on real business cycle theory. Uh, in this video, we're gonna introduce a basic real business cycle model. Let's go. So what you should know before starting this series is that I'll be using uh, David Romer's Advanced Macroeconomics as the key textbook for understanding this stuff. Um, an understanding of the Ramsey model, the diamond model, and the endogenous growth models are recommended, but are not necessary for understanding concepts in these videos. Uh, all of these models that I've listed here are available on this channel. So what is real business cycle theory? Real business cycle theory is the position which holds that fluctuations in the economy are due to real shocks, as opposed to monetary or nominal. These are shocks due to changes in technology, or a shift in aggregate consumer preferences. Uh, until now, we've been analyzing models which converge to equilibrium without much change and have been shocking them externally to different variables to go and see the impact and how they go and change. Like in the Ramsey Cass Koopman's model, uh, we look at a couple different shocks with like tax rates, but we don't actually uh, look at where those shocks are coming from. In real business cycle theory, what makes it unique is that we'll be considering the source of fluctuations. Similar to the diamond and RCK model, we will be defining and solving this model as a utility maximization problem. So that makes it a lot simpler. So the basic model of real business cycle theory consists of both producers and consumers, where time we're considering is discrete, meaning it moves in period one, period two, period three. Uh, the key equations for our production size of the economy are the first equation, which is our uh, production function. Uh, our second equation is our capital accumulation equation. Our third equation is our wages paid to labor. And our fourth equation is the rental rate of capital. Um, it should be noted that, which is an obvious point, that our inputs are paid in their marginal products. Uh, so three and four, that's just, you know, the derivative of our production function uh, with respect to labor and capital. Though there's much more to say about the production side of the economy, the main core of our analysis will take place with regards to our consumers. So our representative consumer's utility function in this model is defined as the following. Um, this utility function is very similar to that used in the ramsey cass koopmans model, save for two differences. The first one is that our model is measured in discrete time, and the second one is that we will be considering two goods instead of one being consumed by our representative consumer. These goods are, you know, consumption and leisure. Our instantaneous utility function in this model is defined as the following, where little u, right, is a function of ln uh, little c at time t plus b times ln 1 minus little l t, where b is greater than zero where CT, right, that is going to be our cons average consumption uh, in our population. And LT, right, that's uh, units of labor over our population. So that's labor force. Additionally, we'll be considering some of our variables to be trending over time. These are somewhat external forces, which, you know, have their own schedule, which will be impacting our consumers and firms. They are population growth technological progress and government spending. So population at any given time t is determined by the following equation, which is the natural log of ln t, right, is equal to n bar, right, which is, you know, the baseline uh, population plus n times t, right, which is, you know, the population growth rate and t, which is, you know, period t, right. Therefore, you know, the level at any given n t is equal to e raised to the power of n bar plus nt. So we're just exponentiating this equation. So we get rid of that natural log and you know we go and raise this whole thing to e. Considering technology um, at time t, we have the same sor sort of thing. We have a trending component though, right? And we have a shock component. As we can see, right, we go and we have a bar, right, plus gt right that's our that's our trending component right plus a tilde t right sorry so g right that's our uh, growth rate of technology um our tilde t right which is you know a tilde a sorry is our shock component 
right? This is determined by a R regressive process. So what, what this goes and tells us that all shocks are going to enter our economy, right? And they're going to die down, right? This is a stationary, uh, stationary regression. So no matter uh, where we're going to be standing, those sh that shock could either, you know, increase, you know, technological stocks, decrease technological stock, depending on, you know, what kind of shock we're going and we're looking at, but um, it's going to die down. Again, we have the same story by government spending, right? We have this trending component where it's determined by, uh, you know, population and uh, the growth rate of technology, right? And we have this shock component, which is also determined by this autoregressive process. So what we end up going and getting is that we're considering all of these external forces to be going and influencing our consumer, our firms, and in turn being a source where we can go and identify where our fluctuations are going and coming from. So uh, that's the first video on real business cycle theory. I hope this video helps. I'll see you in the next one.